I greet you, saints, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Mfunda Muhammad speaking. I'm a child of God. I'm saved. And I thank the pastoral team for this opportunity to share the word of God. Before we continue, may we bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we thank you even this morning for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for giving us another opportunity to do your will in this world that needs us. You spoke to us and challenged us to be witnesses for you. Speak to us even today and strengthen us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Brethren, in continuation from last time's, um, last session's topic, where we were speaking about the challenge we have been given to be witnesses for Christ, allow me today to share with you that there is strength in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we read together in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, and it reads thus, I am telling you the truth. Those who believe in me will do what I do. Yes, they will do even greater things because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask for in my name so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask for anything in my name, I will do it. Brethren, these scriptures highlight the power in asking God in Jesus' name. The scripture above gives us the assurance that the Lord checks our heart for the presence of the Spirit, and if he finds the presence of the Holy Spirit, he is pleased. And through this, he gives us the power to do all things and even greater things than he did during his time on earth. Romans 8, 26-7 reads thus, In the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are, for we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with God for us in groans that words cannot express. And God, who sees into our hearts, knows what the thought of the Spirit is, because the Spirit pleads with God on behalf of his people and in accordance with his will. So as such, anything we ask for in Jesus' name, it will be done. Brethren, allow me to proclaim that in Jesus' name we can put our faith in action. And I want us to just reflect on the scriptures we read the other day, um, where we spoke of the command from Jesus to his believers saying, they should stay in Jerusalem and wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then he commands them to go into the earth and be witnesses for him. In the first sort of three chapters of Acts, I would like us to take note of a couple of things that the believers did in their journey to becoming witnesses for Christ. In Acts chapter 1, verse 14, we are told that they gathered frequently to pray as a group, together the women and with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This was critical because this gave them a chance to come together, to pray together, to share their testimonies, to strengthen each other, and to encourage each other. Let us not forget, brethren, that even though Jesus had ascended to heaven, the mission from the Jewish authorities was still the same. They did not want people to believe in this Jesus, and they were trying to, by all means to ensure that no one speaks um, to the public and people should not convert to Christianity. We can easily relate this to our own spaces at this time, but what we see from these brethren here is a collective determination to continue what Jesus had started. It was simple, to be witnesses for Christ in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. There is another thing that we see from this group of brethren. Um, in Acts, 20, Acts chapter 1, verse 21 to 22, it reads, So then someone must join us as a witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. He must be one of the men who were with our group during the whole time that the Lord Jesus traveled about within us, beginning from the time John preached his message of baptism until the day Jesus was taken up from us to heaven. Here, brethren, we see a determination to ensure that they add to their numbers so that they become 12 because they understood that there was a purpose in that number of 12 disciples. So they wanted to add a member, but there was a condition that that member should be a believer, that member should be someone who had witnessed firsthand, had seen the power and the authority that Jesus had. The third thing we see from the believers 
in the first books of Acts is in Acts chapter 2. From verse 1 it says, When the day of the Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Acts 2, verse 2 to 11 says, Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Brethren, we realize here that because they were together, they witnessed or they had the baptism of the Holy Spirit together. So they were all witnesses of what Jesus had promised would happen to them. Looking at the rest of the scripture, brethren, have you ever wondered why? If we read, we hear of people who were there from Patia, Medea, Elam, Mesopotamia, Libya, Egypt. There were people from all the ends of the earth. And for God's purpose, he made sure that they were in Jerusalem on the day that the baptism of the Holy Spirit were to come down. So in my mind, I believe that Jesus or God indeed wanted even these people to witness the Holy Spirit coming down upon his believers. Acts chapter 2 from verse 40 to 42 says, Peter, Peter made an appeal to them. And with many other words, he urged them, saying, Save yourselves from the punishment coming on this wicked people. They spent their time in learning from the apostles, taking part in fellowship and sharing in fellowship meals and prayers. Many of them believed his message and were baptized. And about 3,000 people were added to the group that day. Brethren, that time they were together, that time they witnessed the baptism of the Holy Spirit gave them an opportunity to evangelize. Here we read of Peter taking an opportunity to the believers and non-believers, confirming that indeed Jesus was up in heaven and Jesus was true to his word, ensuring that the Holy Spirit came down upon them. Another thing that we learn from their time together, the believers, is the issue of fellowship and caring for one another. We see them here fellowshipping together, eating together, identifying each other's needs, sharing their position. So they are showing signs of unity, signs of oneness. And most important of all, in Acts chapter 3, verse 10, we we see the instance where Peter and John were going into the temple and there was the man who could not walk and who was asking for money. But instead of giving him money, they did one thing. They commanded him to stand up and walk, and he walked. Brethren, this was a Christ-like behavior. This is something they hadn't done before. This is something they only saw Jesus doing. So in a sense, we realize that they are now becoming true witnesses for Christ. They are now behaving like Christ. They are now able to do things like Christ did because they had the power of the Holy Spirit. So brethren, we are called today to be witnesses for Christ. And I believe that in the name of Jesus, there are great things, there are even greater things that we can do today. There is so much negativity in the world right now. There is so much despair. There is so much worry and fear. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we are here. We as Christians, we with the authority that Christ has given us, we with the presence of the Holy Spirit can bring about change wherever we are. Brethren, even in this time of all these restrictions as a body of Christ, we need to find ways of witnessing for Christ. The world today is in need. People are, being, are in need of being saved. People need prayer. People need fellowship, love, hope, optimism, confidence, and assurance that life doesn't end here. Even if you're at home sitting and wondering, where is your meal going to come from? Or where am I going to do? Or what am I going to do today? I say to you, I challenge you today. Seek Christ. Find out today what the Lord is saying in your heart. Find out what the Lord is asking you to do. Observe. Look around you. Look in your home. Look in your family. Speak to people. There's someone who is a phone call away. There's someone who's a text message away. There's someone who is a walk away. Someone who's a drive away who just needs you even today. Brethren, we are called to be witnesses for Christ. And through the name of Jesus, there is so much that we can do to change people's lives. In the other session we had, brethren, I spoke of the soul, which is the eternal person. 
people need to get eternal life, and that is only through Christ. And God has called us to be his witnesses even during this time. As we spend time with our families, as we spend time with our loved ones, even this time of lockdowns and all the other restrictions, it is an opportunity for us to make a change, an opportunity for us to put our faith in action, an opportunity for us to display and demonstrate the life that Jesus Christ wants us to have. It is an opportunity for us to be witnesses for Christ. Indeed, brethren, we need to find ways of worship. We need to find ways of coming together and encouraging each other in prayer, encouraging each other in worship, and all these things that we used to do together in fellowship. Allow me to just share a concept that Dr. Charles Stanley talks about in his lesson on decision-making. He says many people end up making the wrong choices because of four things, hunger, anger, loneliness, and tiredness. Brethren, a lot of people are tired emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally, and they need us. We all need each other. We all need to stand up for each other in Jesus' name. There is a difference that we can make. There is a life that you can touch. Even on this day, I urge you, brethren, in your, in your conduct, in your speech, in how you interact with people, it is an opportunity to be a witness for Christ. And this day, I challenge you, brethren, in the name of Jesus Christ, there are greater things that you can do. You can do better than you did yesterday. Someone needs you, and you also need someone. We all need each other. In Jesus' name, we can come together. In Jesus' name, we can make a difference. In Jesus' name, the world can change. In Jesus' name, people can find eternal life. People can be saved. Brethren, it is your opportunity. It is my opportunity. This is an opportune time to show the power of God. Even on this day, I thank you, brethren. Thank you for the time we've had together. May we bow our head in prayer. Lord, we thank you for speaking with us even on this day. Help us, Lord, as we go out into the world to be witnesses for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask you to give us all the tools we need. We ask you to open our eyes, Lord, to what is around us. Open our eyes, Lord, to the needs that need to be met in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your glory and we thank you for being with us. We thank you that you are the rock, the foundation upon which we build our lives even on this day. Help us through the day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank and we pray. Amen.